My name is David Caldwell. I'm the, a senior mechanical engineer. We do the conceptual designs when a scientist comes to us and says they want to design an instrument to do a certain task. We come up with the concepts. We then turn those concepts into real uh, designs. And then we get the stuff fabricated at different model shops and we interact with the model shops and the machine shops making sure the stuff's fabricated correctly. We have a pretty good idea of how we want to do it, but every single piece is a little bit different. Lectures all like this, but it also makes sure the two planes are parallel. And there's Went to college, got my degree in engineering, went to look for my first mechanical engineering job and uh, wound up at Raytheon. They actually offered to send me to college to get my master's and I got my master's on their dime. We found an ad for the Smithsonian and said, geez, that sounds like interesting work. I came and interviewed. They explained to me what they do. And it, from a mechanical point of view, it's a very strong mechanical job. Everything we do here is really high mechanical engineering. And it gave me the ability to learn more about optics and mounting optics. And I started and they hired me. And I've been here ever since. My dad was a uh, flight mechanic for the Navy, and uh, he was a, basically, you know, a physics teacher, so we'd go into his classes as little kids and watch him teach physics. We fixed cars together, we built motorcycles together. You name it, we did it. Any kid that wants to be involved in the space or, you know, designing telescopes and kind of this industry that we're into, is they have to go get in education. You can't just walk out of high school thinking I'm going to do it. You need the background and the ability to get these jobs and it's much better to go on in education and get your BS in engineering and I, I don't think it matters what field. And then you really just have to push yourself into this industry. My name's Harlan Haight, and I'm an aerospace test engineer here at the Marshall Space Flight Center. My primary function here at the facility is to integrate the test article to the hardware that currently exists at our chamber. That means uh, when they bring a test article in, my primary job is to build any hardware. Was well, I'm a local guy. I grew up here in uh, Huntsville, and I went to a small high school in the northern part of the county named Hazel Green. I had 98 people graduated my class. I uh, attended a junior college actually and went to the University of Alabama for one year, came home for a summer and ended up landing a job at a local company here that did uh, computer aided design work. The computer aided design work was just the, my f the greatest thing that I'd ever had an opportunity to work with. But back in, I graduated in 1977 and up until I went to college I never saw a computer and that was uh, just a fascination to be able to get on a computer and draw ideas I had in my head was uh, something I knew I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And the Marshall Space Flight Center here was actually using some of the packages I was supporting and they had a contract for a support person so I took that job, ended up here at Marshall as a contractor and after five years or so of contractor work I was offered a job at NASA and I was asked to come to this facility to help do drawings and design hardware that would interface with the Chandra Space Telescope. The kind of job, we're always doing something different every day. We don't know if we're going to be working with liquid nitrogen one day, helium refrigerator systems, working out in the chamber with um, the large dome. It's just exciting to be able to wake up every morning and come to work knowing that you're going to get to do something exciting and, and fun to do. I never dreamed in my wildest dreams I'd be working side by side with with real astronauts and who would ever guess that a small town guy like me would ever get an opportunity like that but you just never know where you may end up in life and I just have to say study hard and don't give up and when everything looks like it can't get any better it will. I'm Alphonse Sterling um, and I'm an astrophysicist uh, more specifically I'm a solar physicist and I'm um, at the Marshall Space Flight Center. Uh, when I was uh, 
from six, seven or eight or so, I was just very interested and intrigued with the uh, space program. My major in college was physics. At that time, I took a course uh, in Japanese, uh, just kind of on the side. I found that I could actually marry these two interests, my interest in, in science and in, in solar science in particular, and uh, working in Japan. In college, I didn't know exactly what field I wanted to go into, if it was going to be math or physics or uh, what branch of physics, but I took a, uh, a um, uh, general astronomy course. I decided to uh, concentrate on solar astronomy. And uh, that's what I focused on when I went to graduate school. If there's something you're really interested in, um, and uh, uh, it's, it will take a lot of work to learn about this particular thing. And don't worry too much about what other folks are, are thinking about and, and, uh, and doing. My name is Barbara Cobb, and I recently became the project manager for the phase E portion, flight portion of Hanode Solar B. And so now I'm responsible for all aspects of project management. The, all the, the budget aspects, the contract aspects. The big thing that made me want to work at NASA is the 1969 landing on the moon. I was nine years old and I was just watching them walk on the moon at that moment in time, I decided I was going to work at NASA. My high school career and college career was spent doing whatever it took, taking the classes, taking, you know, doing the work it took to be able to work at NASA. I can remember when I was uh, a graduating senior, I was working in my dad's store, which he was a appliance and TV repairman. He sold appliances. Farmers in their overalls would come in and they would ask me where I was, what I was going to do after graduation. And I would tell them I was going to the University of Alabama and I was going to be an engineer. No, 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 no. You're a girl. Girls aren't engineers. Uh, are you going to be a nurse or are you going to be a teacher? This, this totally confused me, in fact, to the point where I had to go talk to my mother about it. And she assured me I can be anything I wanted to be but it happened time and time again. It really surprised a lot of people in that town and I found out, actually found out later when I graduated out of college that I was the first female engineer from that high school. So I came here to Huntsville, worked at Marshall Space Flight Center, I went into, actually ended up in mission operations in manned space flight and worked on Space Lab and then went on to International Space Station till about four years ago and came to Hanode. Ta-da, the history of my life. Uh, my name is Greg St. John. I'm a engineering technician here at Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville. Uh, I work primarily on mechanical systems and some electrical systems. Uh, work in the 1K and 10K clean room environment where we receive our uh, space flight and ground support hardware that uh, comes into our facility for testing. Uh, it comes here for uh, vacuum and thermal testing. We have cryogenic capability within our chamber and uh, we run LN2 through uh, outer shrouds within the chamber uh, to simulate cold environments of space uh, at the same time that we're pulling high vacuum on uh, the test hardware. And as the test series rolls on and we uh, do one test after another, we, we end up doing the telescope mirror uh, testing at some point near the end of our part uh, in the program. We do a lot of uh, maintenance to keep the facility up and running. Uh, there's a lot of pumps that have to be maintained and we uh, keep checking all of our electronic uh, monitoring systems. We'll make sure that everything is kept calibrated and that uh, everything is working as it's expected to. 
I grew up a tinkerer, <laughs> I guess you could say. I, if Dad threw away a television, uh, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was just excited to rip it to pieces. I wanted to know every little nut and bolt, uh, every washer, how it came apart, how it went together. Looking back now, that's really where I'm at. I've grown to really understand the inner workings of mechanics and what it takes to get those things operational. I uh, was very interested in uh, drafting work, in design work, and um, this was in the years before even computers were doing drafting work and we were doing it on uh, drawing boards. I attended a local junior college here near Huntsville and uh, got a technical degree in uh, design and industrial drafting and that brought me to a co-op job opportunity which was uh, offered up and uh, Marshall was taking two co-op students from the local junior college and I decided to um, put my hat in on that and fortunately got chosen, was offered a permanent career position after I finished my technical degree. I came to work for Marshall actually working in engineering design and from there I had the opportunity to come here to work in the XRCF doing a job that I really didn't know a whole lot about. It's really been a, uh, a growing learning process over the past 12 years for me. It's very important, I think, personally, to be happy in what you do. If you enjoy getting up in the morning and coming to your job, uh, that means the world. It really does. Uh, there may be a difference in salary from one job to the next, but I think uh, enjoyment of your job offsets um, money in a lot of ways. Especially high school students, what they have before them, they don't even realize um, the opportunities that are out there, I guess, and um, you have to be looking for open doors and uh, you have to be willing to, to jump through that door and, and find what you're passionate about and go for it. My name is Leslie Frazier and I work for Quality Assurance at Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory. I work in bonded stores keeping track of all the parts that are bought and made and uh, to put the uh, telescope together right down to the screws, nuts and washers. What we do is we have all the parts uh, have to come in with a certification. Each part whether it's a screw or an electronic component, has to meet a certain criteria. All this information comes with the part from the manufacturer. We keep a physical copy of this part. We also log it into a data system and give it its own special part uh, lot number. So if you need a part, I can go find it, give it to you, and I know that that part is exactly the part that's needed. I started in this business um, a long time ago by sitting on the bench building PC boards uh, for commercial operations. Um, you would be given a part, parts list, and a board, and you would hand solder it, bend the parts, put it in, and then from that I worked my way up to being certified for flight builds. And after doing that for a while, I was asked to go to the next level, which is inspector. And an inspector goes through and does the work of making sure everybody else is doing the build according to the criteria set forward for flight builds. But from that, then you get into jobs that expand you even further so that Pretty soon you can, you can see how a thing gets built from beginning to end and you're involved in the whole process. Inspection is very good for that because it gives you a wide variety of building it from the component level up through the test level. My advice to, to students who are, are looking at this as a career is to get more education uh, because it gives you wider exposure earlier on so that you can go uh, do more interesting things quicker. Uh, that is um, you know, a good two-year college to get you started to see really where you 
what side you would like to do. Would you like to do the space? Would you like to build military stuff? Would you like to work on the submarines? And then you can expand from there. My name is Larry Knowles. I'm the supervisor for the uh, Harvard College Observatory Model Shop. In the earlier days, we would actually build models or mock-ups of telescopes, and uh, since the advent of computer-aided design and the newer drafting and drawing techniques, we're able to actually fabricate actual parts instead of the models. The type of work that we receive you typically comes from engineers or scientists and what they'll do is supply us with drawings of components that they need and from that we can fabricate parts, computer-aided design and then computer-aided manufacturing and we're able to take that computer drawing and then start actually cutting cut material from that. Some of the parts that we've uh, been challenged with for the telescope are parts that we end up making out of uh, materials that are a little more difficult to machine such as titanium, some of the uh, harder stainless steels, and uh, also the tolerances that we're working to these days. Um, typical tolerance is plus or minus five thousandths. Uh, your, your human hair is plus or minus about three thousandths and um, we're working to those tolerances and then even tighter numbers that are uh, much lower than that. We uh, use um, mechanical inspection, um, we also use what they call coordinate measuring machines which will measure in three-dimensional space the size, shape, and features of a part. In the process of uh, assembling parts, putting p telescopes together is you may come across things that either don't quite fit or um, adjustments in order to make things connect properly. Personally, c going through school, sometimes I struggled with the books, the homework and all, but uh, mechanical ability has kind of been in my family. I went evening classes at Wentworth Institute for machining, and I took a number of years there uh, just learning the trade. The most enjoyment is that you're constantly changing, you're constantly making different items, different parts, and um, you get a wide variety of uh, machining techniques. The amount that I enjoy this, um, what I've done is brought it to other people, and th th the way I've done that is um, hooked up with uh, one of the Vogue Tech schools in the area, and I teach a night class, or, and we, we actually teach machining, and it's, it's, it's simpler parts, but it gives everybody a taste of what machining is all about and whether they like the trade. Is I love my job. I, um, this is, it's very exciting. It's a good living. Um, if, you, if you think, you know, machining or being a machinist or a sheet metal fabricator is something you might want to do, it's, it's a very good job. My name is Sang Park, and I'm a thermal engineer here at Harvard Smithsonian. Um, my primary role here at, um, at the Institute is to be able to analyze thermal performance of our instruments and as well as, as the spacecraft. Our instrument typically exists out in space environment where we have a harsh, uh, both cold and as well as hot environment. So it is critical to, to be able to predict that using my computer model and be able to provide recommendations to back to other engineering community to be able to maintain desirable temperature so that our instrument will be operating correctly um, throughout the entire mission life. I have a degree in mechanical engineering and within that mechanical engineering field um, I have a background in thermodynamics and as well as fluid uh, dynamics. So from those backgrounds through my education, I was able to um, um, obtain a position in, in an electronic company that was specializing in uh, military aircraft. And I was recruited by um, an employment agency to be able to work on 
uh, more the aerospace or the space side of the industry. I was contacted by, again, um, employment agency um, indicating that there was a position open here at Harvard Smithsonian, but it would involve going back to uh, doing the technical work that I was, was doing in previous um, years. So that was very interested in. Um, so that was able to use my background in the thermal field to be able to um, get a position back after being laid off from uh, another industry. I would like to think that um, while you're studying hard and working very hard, um, that um, my recommendation is also to be able to enjoy life as well. So, um, so I guess that would be uh, my recommendation to somebody who might be interested in coming into space industry because it is a very interesting field. Uh, you get to meet very interesting people along the way, um, but also that uh, the outside environment you could still be able to have an a, a enjoyable life and be able to um, to support that by having a great job. Hi, my name is Janice Wilson. I'm a project administrator in the XRT program office at the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory. We, we, we refer to that as SAO in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, I've been working on the XRT program for about six years. Um, I'm one of about three people in the program office. I was a math major in school. I graduated in the 70s. Um, and at the time, there really weren't that many teaching jobs available because I was when I graduated, I was certified to teach um, mathematics to middle school level or the high school level. And as I mentioned, there weren't that many teaching jobs available. So I decided to move on and try something else. So I worked for Harvard University as an administrator um, for several years. And then I went and worked in indust industry. I worked for a company called Teradyne in Boston. I was there for nine years. Um, and then I saw an ad for SAO as a project administrator working for the High Energy Astrophysics Division, that's also known as HEAD, um, here in Cambridge. Um, so I've been here now 20 years. Scientists particularly could come to, to this office and ask, um, you know, is this in the budget? Um, how much do we have left? Um, oh, you know, oh my goodness, we need more. We need more money. We, so I interface with um, some NASA personnel very often. Um, very often NASA will require budgetary work from me that, okay, you know, what ha you know, give us an account of what you've spent and this is the format we need it in. We, um, and we also need this by tomorrow. I knew what I was interested in and liked working with people, liked working in an office, liked working hard, um, that I just tried to pursue an alternative path, at least temporarily, and it worked out for me that I was able to um, be perfectly content in the field that I'm in, that I like it so much that I want to stay here. My advice to you is to work hard, um, follow your interests. Um, if it so happens along the way, there's a little you know, roadblock, um, walk ar work around it, and even if you need to pursue something that's somewhat related, in my case it worked out, and um, I'm doing what I want to do. My name is David Henson, and um, I am a procurement analyst here at the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory. I began working at the Smithsonian in 87, and um, I've been working as a procurement analyst since, so oh, say, around 1992. I, my undergraduate degree is from Newberry College in Brookline, Mass. Uh, I have a degree in management information systems. Why I'm not working in that field is anybody's guess. <laughs> you know, as most people do, you somewhat, you kind of uh, take what's available to you. And the Smithsonian offered me a position as a procurement analyst and um, I've been working in that capacity ever since. What we actually do at the procurement part is obvious. I mean that implies that we buy goods and services, we procure. The analyst element comes into play when we, when a uh, program, we have many programs here at the observatory and those programs oftentimes, uh, the money is used I should say to support these programs uh, come with different sets of rules. And the analyst part 
comes into play when we have to uh, analyze what particular rules apply to the use of that of the type of money. Um, and then that can be a challenge. We have grant money, we have contract money, both um, private and federal, and that configuration or, or, or that uh, element is what I believe justifies the analyst part of procurement analysts. So we buy and we decide exactly how monies are uh, spent given the program that we're spending for. I really am not aware of what's required until it's defined and it's put through the system and ends up on my desk. And from that point on, mine is to find the, um, the best possible source for that product or service. There are certain uh, rules that apply when we spend um, federal funds that require us to make for a very even playing field to, to enhance a competitive uh, um, environment, if you will. And um, we do that by going out and um, seeking um, competitive quotes from the various vendors, you know, with an emphasis on small vendors, you know, given the rules as they apply to a, a contract. So that's really where the analytical element comes into play is we have to determine when to apply the various sets of rules, you know, and it can get kind of uh, <laughs> kind of a challenge at times, but we muddle through and um, the, the fact that there's five of us back there makes it a lot easier because when I get stuck on something, there's always somebody there I can ask and, and, and uh, get the support I need. So it's, it's a pretty, pretty interesting um, experience. Well, my advice to, to um, high school kids, if, you, if, if you're exposed to an opportunity or you have the, the privilege of working in the procurement field, I think you should, uh, you should give, it a, give it a try. Um, it's, um, it's, 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 it can be fun. I mean, you know, the, the, the challenge is not necessarily so cerebral that it's frustrating, but, you know, it's, it's just not boring, you know, and the exposure to the many um, elements of whatever uh, particular genre you're working in. In my case, I work in the scientific in, uh, environment, so um, I get to, um, to buy a lot of interesting things. Till this day, I have no idea what a gun oscillator is, but all I know is I've bought <laughs> quite a few of them, you know. If you get the opportunity to work in the procurement field, um, I, I, I can guarantee you that there will not be a dull moment. You know, you will not be bored, and um, it can take you a lot of places. If you're the type that likes to travel, this is the job for you. It's, it's interesting because it, um, it, it, it's good to see what my contribution um, amounts to. You know, um, I, I, I always see the, the, the purchasing end, you know, I'm buying widgets, but I never see what these widgets, you know, result in. So that's the exciting part for me. You know, and um, I will get to see uh, more of what I contributed to as time goes on, I'm sure. If you have the opportunity, uh, young ladies and young gentlemen, I will, I definitely think you should give it a shot. It's fun. I love it. <laughs>
natural fits for me I saw was mechanical engineering. Um, went to school, graduated, got my degree, um, got a job in the industry um, right out of college. Even as a young kid, um, before I was fishing, I always had the, this dream of working for NASA, working on the next Mars mission, working on a future moon mission. You have to be dexterous at my job. A lot of the stuff um, where I'm working, you're working with optics that are worth three, four million dollars a piece. Um, the last thing you need to do is to drop a three million dollar optic and put a crack in it. Um, when you're bonding things, you really have to be very steady, um, very controlled, almost, almost like a surgeon. And it's something that you also have to have a calmness about you um, to understand in pressure situations that you need, just need to slow down, to take your time, to think things through, and to do everything correctly. If I was going to advise any prospective student coming out of high school, if this is a career path you're looking to take, first and foremost, you need an education. Um, this field is not something you could come out of high school and just start out. Um, you really need to have at least your bachelor's behind you, most likely your master's. It's one of the good things about an education. Um, you'll, always have, you'll always have your degree. You'll always have an education. Something that you can never take away. It's something people can never take away from you.